Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. And this is my buddy Puccini. He helps me in the craft room. He's very subdued today. He's been to the vet and had some shots and they told me he'd be tired, but he's practically comatose. <laughs> he's been napping all day. But he follows me down to the craft room and sits right next to where I'm working. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring him on. So I have a very fun card for you. I'm sticking with my theme recently of Back to Your Stash. And so this is a card that's made with a stamp set, Positive Thoughts. And it's in the annual catalog. And so it doesn't have dies. It's just a stamp set. And so I have um, a very simple card layout and just a little bit of stamping and a real easy card to make. But I'm, I'm sort of enjoying this looking back into my stash and picking things that I haven't used. And you know we've all got them. We purchased them and we had all the good intentions and we haven't used them or haven't used them very much. So my challenge to you this week is going to be to take something out of your stash and use it that you haven't ever used or haven't used much. All right. Let's get, just get started. This is my card, and I have used the leaves. Let me show you the stamp set if you don't remember. Positive Thoughts. It says, hugs, prayers, love. Friends like you mean more every year. Sending positive thoughts and feel good wishes. And I used friends like you mean more every year. And I used this leaf stamp and the butterfly. And that is all I used to make my card. So let me show you what it takes to make. Oh, let me show you the inside. So um, I did it almost tone on tone. I used evening evergreen and soft um, succulent. And then in the butterfly on this one, I did blue. And then I added some Highland Heather highlights. And I thought it might be interesting to see what it would look like if it had more contrast. So I'm planning to do my butterfly in um, Daffodil Delight with um, highlights from dark uh, from Mango Melody, and we'll see what it looks like for that. What you need to make this card is pretty simple. It is a white base that is eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter, just a regular A2 card. And then I have two pieces of soft succulent, four inches by five and a quarter, one to layer on the inside and the outside, and then two pieces of white, three and three quarters by five uh, for the inside and the outside. You need a piece of scrap to stamp your sentiment and this piece is about three, maybe a little bit bigger than three and a quarter by two, and that's plenty. I used this die, which is from my uh, stitched rectangle dies, and I, um, I used the second smallest in this um, long rectangle here, the smaller rectangles. And I tried using the bigger one for my evening evergreen background, but it was too big, so I ended just cutting down one. This piece is three and an eighth by one and an eighth, and it works perfectly when we use this die to make our sentiment. So, um, and let's see, what else? So I'm using Evening Evergreen. I'm using Soft Succulent. I'm using Daffodil Delight and Mango Melody for the highlights, and we'll see how that works. All right, so I think this this is mostly stamping. So I'm going to take out my uh, scratch paper here and lay that down here. And um, as I use my evening evergreen first, this is a brand new pad, so it's nice and juicy. <laughs> and I'm going to ink up my leaves and I put one set of leaves right from the corner into the center of the card. 
and then I inked it up again and got this darker piece again kind of coming in from the side and then I cleaned up my um, my stamp and I went oops I forgot to do this little corner down here there is one small piece that I wanted in the corner in the dark so I came right into the corner and did a dark piece there now on the inside um, might as well go ahead and stamp those as long as I've got that evening evergreen open for the inside what I did was I came in from this corner again let me move some of this out of the way so you can see what it is I'm talking about and I stamped this once down here and then without re-inking sort of next generation uh, like that and it just kind of turns into soft succulent <laughs> so that's what I did down there and then once I get my stamp all cleaned up from the evening evergreen then I opened my soft succulent and did some stamping again sort of um, like background and I could have done that I suppose the same way I did here but I wanted to make sure because of the trim that I got the soft succulent so ink that up and come in from the top and then in from here and just kind of fill in wherever you need a few extra leaves to make your design and there we go that is literally all of the leaf stamping that there is and next thing I did was again using my evening evergreen out here again and my sentiment I have my piece of um, is that the right piece no it's not uh, use my piece of scrap for my sentiment and type get this right here sort of in the middle but closer to the bottom so I can just put my uh, my die around it this stamp set stamps beautifully and then put this on there like that and what you get out is the beautiful stitch detail of like this then I have my piece of backing and all I did was add some adhesive to the back of this and get this centered on the front of my mat piece there we go now for the front please we have a bit more stamping to do I'm gonna get my butterflies down I think I'm done with these greens now and so I have my um, daffodil delight and my stamp still has balmy blue on it which is what the color that I used for the front for the first one so on here if we take a look at the card front you can get an idea of where I put those butterflies um, I put them up towards the top as though they were flying out of the scene so let me just do a test one there yep I think that's fine so I'm putting that one up there and then one right down here and then for the inside of the card you will see that I put one right here coming up out of these leaves and then one more at the top here and I think that's going to look great now I've got my this is the light and I want the dark mango melody and so we'll see what happens if I add this to make sure that it's 
it's not going to show. It's not dark enough to show. So I'm going to have to change colors. Let's try the Calypso Coral. Okay, so I've got my light Calypso Coral, and I'm going to the more fine point, and I'm just going to put some dots along the edge of the wings of the butterfly. It looks like there's white dots in the stamp anyway. And then I'm just going to sort of brush away from the front center out along that upper wing and then down here on either side and then sort of out away from the body in the center. And you'll have to tell me what you think or what color combinations you might use for butterflies if you were going to do this. I'm not sure this is the best combination, but um, I think it works. I was hoping the Mango Melody would be dark and different enough that it would be just a, a darker, richer color on top of this, but basically it didn't show. All right, so there we go with those two. And then um, on the front of the card, I will do the same thing. Now here, same kind of thing. I'm going to put those dots in around on the wings and come up and away and down and away from the front. And then on this one, on the other one, I use those iridescent blue rhinestones and I'll show them to you. They work perfectly for that first one because part of them are mostly blue. And then these down here have kind of a dark green um, and blue in them. And so I thought it, it worked particularly well with those blue butterflies. And it looks like it matches the evening evergreen. So on this one, I think I'm going to end up putting champagne rhinestones on the body of the butterfly and then continue to use the evening evergreen ones on the base. But sometimes contrast is good and sometimes it's too much. So you'll have to tell me what you think. And I'm going to come fairly close in on this body because I'm going to end up putting a rhinestone in there and it'll cover up most of that. Okay, so there we go. We've got that done. My sentiment is ready to go and I used some of that beautiful new silk soft succulent ribbon. So I need a length of ribbon that will go around this and my soft succulent piece. So I need a piece that's not very long. Let's see, this one is about six inches. Okay, so, whoops, knocked my camera there. So, um, I'm going to move a couple of these things out of the way here. And I'm ready to put this stamped piece on my soft succulent mat. And I'm going to be putting some of my seal on there and then get this centered on the front of my card. Then this piece is ready to go around the whole front of that card. And I'm just going to put a little bit of dot runner on that so that the ribbon stays put once I put it in place. And there we go, like that. I didn't think I did as much stamping on the bottom of this one, so I may have to add some more. I probably still have some ink on that stamp. Yep, a little bit. So, 
what you do when you have done this so that you're already on here is you just put something in place to I'm going to just tear this little piece in half because I just need to protect that little edge as I do a little bit of additional stamping and I'm just going to get a little bit of that soft succulent look so that it's a little fuller there towards the bottom. No, that's not quite right. I think that'll be fine now. Put a little bit of color down there. Move those pieces out of the way, and that way I don't get any on my piece of mat. Now I'm going to take this piece and put some seal on it. And put this piece on the front of my card. There we go. And then I have my sentiment and I'm going to put a couple of large dimensionals on the back of this. Put that into place right in here so I can see a little edge of that ribbon on this side and then I'm ready to do some of my uh, embellishments on this one so I have a couple of my champagne rhinestones that I'm going to put into place on the center of my butterflies. There we go. And then I'm going to put some of these others that have those kind of evergreen, uh, evening evergreen highlights. And I'm going to put a few around the card Maybe one up here and I'm going to keep these on the bottom fairly low. In fact, I might not put that last one on until I've had a chance to put my um, knot bow in place. And so I'm going to just make a knot bow. Sometimes when your ribbon is a little bit more substantial, you get a better knot bow. And this is a beautiful satin ribbon and just ties beautifully. And there I've got a pretty nice looking knot for the front of my knot bow. And I will take my ribbon scissors and cut my tails just like that and get that prepared to go right down here and I'm going to put that down with a glue dot and I'm going to take a nice big glue dot and put that on the back side of my bow and put that into place right there under my message now I'm going to encourage these tails to stay in place with another glue dot on either side. And there we go. I've got that in there. Now I'm going to take that 
other rhinestone and tuck it right here underneath the bow. And there we go. That's the outside of our card done. Now this is going to go on the inside. I'm not as crazy as I thought I might be of this yellow um, for the butterfly. I think something softer. Maybe a pink would be better. Um, it's kind of brash looking to me. Maybe I could tone it down with a little wink of Stella. We'll have to see here. And put this into place on the inside. Now I left the inside without any more sentiment because I'm thinking that this one, friends like you mean more every year, have a great birthday or something like that. So I'm going to add another sentiment later, but for now, I think that is pretty good. So that is my project for the day. Between the two, I think I like this one better. You'll have to tell me what you think. Let's see, I've got a little wink of Stella. I wonder if that would help. It certainly doesn't hurt. See what it does to this one now. It doesn't help at all. <laughs> nope, I don't think I like the yellow and the and the orange. Some other color combination should be in there. And I don't know what it should be. But um, that is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. This offer is good for another couple of weeks. We have... Um, uh, $125 worth of product for $99, which is the normal deal. And then in addition to that, you get to pick two more stamp sets. So that makes your join offer pretty good. It makes it worth $170 or $180, depending on what stamp sets you pick. And it's all for $99. I thought I would keep it simple this week. And I'm really pleased with the way this one particularly came out. I think that soft blue is better than the yellow. I do a prize draw every month out of people that place an order on my store. It's a $60 shopping spree on me and um, you put an order of any size on my store lbedinger.stampinup.net and you can get to it through my blog www.inkandingenuity.com and I'll be back soon with more cards, more tips, and more projects. Bye! Thank you.